Hi everyone, welcome to Edupedia World. This is a new course offered by Edupedia World which is uh, Introduction to Material Science and Engineering. I will be your instructor for this course. I am Sabisachi Roy. In this particular course, we will give you an introductory glimpse into the vast field of material science and engineering which is a very very exciting field in today's context. So without further ado, let's uh, jump into some discussion about this field, some history and the relevance of this field. All of you might uh, have an idea about what this SIP is. This is one of the most iconic SIPs. I, uh, I think you have guessed it right, it's Titanic. And this particular picture was taken when it was uh, leaving Southampton for its maiden journey the journey which ultimately led to the sinking of the Titanic. Initially it was thought that Titanic is unsinkable. Why was it so? It was one of the best ships built on all different criteria by the existing standards. But what exactly happened that led to the failure? There were actually several factors which led to the failure but uh, one of the most important factor which was the last nail in the coffin was that the quality of steel used was not conducive for sub-zero temperature operations. What do I mean by that? Steel has something or rather all materials have something which is known as ductile to brittle transition temperature. That is the temperature above which the material is ductile Hence, it can transform elastically and uh, it does not fail easily. That's the bottom line. But below that temperature, it fails easily. All the testings were done above the ductile to brittle ten transition temperature. But the Titanic, when it hit the iceberg, was actually below that. As a result, it would not take the impact and that led to the sinking of the Titanic, among other factors. So this is just to give you an idea about the importance of understanding the material which you are using. What are the analysis you need to do for putting it into application. Right? This is just to give you a brief glimpse into the vast field. So as I said, ductile, high ductile to brittle transition temperature was there for the Titanic and uh, brittle fracture took place at lower temperature which was not predicted hence it was thought to be unsinkable. With this uh, brief anecdote let's see what are the uses of material science and engineering where do we see it in our day-to-day -day activity. So this is a uh, aircraft this uh, signifies the transportation sector the complete transportation sector, sector requires something lightweight and uh, engines which can be more efficient. So these are the things where uh, material scientists come into play. Right? So transportation sector is affected by material science and engineering and the knowledge of it. Housing sector, steel reinforcement bars, cement, everything are, everything is materials and the better material we have the better, better material we can develop, the more strong our buildings will be, the higher the skyscrapers we can build. The telecommunication sector, we have optic fibers. Now, nowadays the internet speed is ranging in gigabytes per second. So the development in material science and engineering and physics has led to high speed communication with a large amount of data without being lost on the way. Then again we have the agriculture sector. Food is the most important thing along with housing. So material science and engineering has provided us with different materials and different equipments which helps us enhance our capabilities in the agricultural sector too. You yourself can think of many more fields where you apply your material science knowledge either to improve the human living quality or to increase the amount of luxuries we can afford. Right? Now let's take a dive into the history of 
human civilization, thereby of materials engineering. Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age. Now see, the whole history, prehistoric human civilization is actually divided by the names of uh, certain materials which were present, which actually led to the development of human civilization slowly but certainly. The impact of material was so dominant that today humans named those ages after the materials rather than anything else. Fine. Now these are some of the things which were used in the prehistoric era when the science and technology was not really developed. What are these? Wooden logs. So these were basically the things which were freely available in the nature. Human did not have to innovate or invent. So logs were used to build houses or to build a raft to get through the water bodies. Then stones were used as tools and devices. Animals, fur and stuff were used to make clothing to protect yourself against the harshness of the weather. Then clay pottery were used to contain water or cooking, things like that. So what we see is that even in the prehistoric civilization conditions, materials were of utmost importance. The only difference was that humans did not invent new materials, rather they used the materials which were given by nature. But no, nonetheless, they were there and uh, they were one of the most important constituent in living a relatively decent life. Now to present situation. We build our house using steel reinforcement bars. So the day-to-day -day research which is going in this field is leading to stronger bars which bear, whereby we can build much more stronger, taller houses which are more resistant to natural calamities like earthquakes uh, or we can reduce the cost. So a lot of research goes in this field. Then the silicon revolution as you can call it. The present generation is basically the silicon age. So the whole integrated chip, the whole IT sector is based on the knowledge of material science and engineering along with physics. In combats, a lot of more lives would be lost if there were no Kevlar present. So uh, West that is so strong that it can even restrict a bullet to get through you. That is some research and that is the power of material science and engineering. The materials which are used to make the spaceship, that's the epitome of material science research, right? When the spaceship is re-entering the atmosphere, the temperature goes in the range of 2000 Celsius and you need to have materials which can restrict, which can withstand such harsh conditions. Huge friction, high temperature. Materials restrict the, those uh, kind of unhuman conditions and thereby protect the astronauts and help us get into space and come back safely. Finally, this uh, represents a graphene sheet, one of the more talked about materials in present civilization, present material science community. You can uh, Google and study a lot more about it if you are interested. So these are just glimpses of different aspects in which material science and engineering is affecting us. This small lecture was just an introductory lecture to give you an idea about a brief history about material science and engineering and where we are presently, how much impact it is having on us on a day-to-day -day activity. Right? Now, some housekeeping for this course. The book which I will be following for this course 
He is a material science and engineering by William D. Callister. This is one of the most basic books and one of the most uh, renowned books in the field. So if you want to study and learn more about this field, I suggest you can start with this particular book by William D. Callister. The name might be Fundamentals of Material Science and Engineering. Okay. There are tons of lots of materials available apart from this book. So you can do a little googling and you will find a lot more materials. Fine. Now the next lecture what we'll do is that we'll start with the scope of material science and engineering. We'll see where is the application of this in a more de detailed technical manner and we'll also try to enlist why should we study about materials how does it affect us though you have gotten a glimpse of it in today's lecture but uh, we'll formalize it in the next lecture I hope uh, today's lecture was entertaining as well as informative and uh, this might have arisen a bit of interest in you so hopefully I'll see you in the next lecture till the next lecture have a great day goodbye